Hello fellow cyborgs, today I want to talk to you about free reading. So a couple of months ago, Paige from Pages and Pages uploaded a YouTube video called The Hardest Booktube Challenge Ever. That will be linked down below, but in it she talks about the idea of only rereading the same 30 books over and over again throughout your lifetime. Now I know a lot of you are like already turned off at that idea and don't worry I'm not completely converting but I really liked that question and it got me thinking some things that I think are really important about my reading, why I'm reading, what I'm reading, and why I'm not rereading. I read as a hobby. I read because of self-care. I read because it helps me explore the world without my anxiety getting in the way, exploring people, exploring situations without my anxiety getting in the way, and I read because I don't know how to not read. But I read books because I want to find favorite books. I want every book that I open up, I'm crossing my fingers that it's going to be something that I'm going to want to revisit again and again and again throughout my lifetime. And I keep books on my shelves because I intend to reread them. I intend to use them again. I don't keep books on my bookcase just to display how awesome I am and how well read I am. They remain there because I intend for them to be purposeful in the future. I haven't reread very much over the past two or three years. In 2015, I reread five books, but they weren't books that I was itching to reread. I've been meaning to reread some of my favorites like The Book Thief or Her Fearful Symmetry. It's not one of my favorites, but I remember really enjoying it and I want to reread it. I've been intending to reread a lot of books that I think are really awesome for years and I just haven't done it. And this year too, I have not, I don't think, reread a thing besides children's picture books. Now for me right now and me last year, I had and have a lot of books on my physical DVR bookshelf. I've got over 140 books right now that I own that I haven't read. That number is daunting and I want to chip that number down. But even before that number was ridiculous, I haven't been rereading in ages, probably since high school. In high school, I reread Aberat multiple times. I reread Twilight multiple times because that was a really important book in my adolescence. I, I was a rereading machine. I knew these books that I loved back to front. I don't do that anymore. I don't know my favorite books anymore. When I was doing my book review extravaganza a couple of months ago, which was a series of review videos, one each day of the week for seven days about my favorite books of all time, for some of them I couldn't talk about them because I couldn't remember them. I couldn't remember the characters' names, I couldn't remember the main plot points. That was not only embarrassing, but also something to be really sad about. These are my favorite books that I remember them being favorite favorites, but I don't remember anything about them. What is the point of reading books in the hopes that they will impact you if you can't remember them? That's just a waste of time. It's like knitting a sweater that you don't properly like seal up and it unravels as you wear it. Like why would you bother knitting that sweater in the first place if it's not going to stay with you? And so for me, the fact that I can't remember some of the like main plot points of my favorite books, that's disheartening. It makes me feel like my reading hobby is just a waste of time because I'm not actually consuming and it's not sticking in my brain of what I'm reading. And it's just not good. It's not how I want to be reading. Let's put it that way. So in Paige's video, she's talking about the benefits or what to consider when thinking about this idea of only rereading the same 30 books over and over again. She hasn't started this project, but she's had a couple mentors in her life who do something like this, and she respects them and thinking, maybe they're onto something that I haven't thought of yet, so I'm going to think about this a bit more. Now go over to her channel to hear more about what she's considering when she's choosing her 30 books, or why she thinks that this is a really interesting thing. It's a lovely video I've watched about three times. It's really hit me hard and made me really think, and I love videos that made me do that. But a couple of the things that she said would change the face of booktube if we were doing this. If we all had our 30 books that we reread over and over again, we would see on channels stronger discussions. We would have more to actually say about the books that we have been reading 
because we would know them back to front and we would pick up on the little things during our 4-3 read. Also, our channels would perhaps look more diverse. Each person would have like their 30 books and that's what their world was. That's what their booktube channel was going to be talking about. You'd never get like people caught up in the hype and 17 channels reading all the same book and talking about the same book. Right now, that's Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which I really, you know, there are only so many reviews of that I can watch. And so right, right now, my feed's a little bit full of videos that I don't want to be watching. I'm not just shooting out Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, but there have been instances I'm sure that you guys have felt where all you're, you're just seeing the same books over and over again on booktube and how is that interesting video watching? I mean, everyone has something unique to say, but it's still, it's just not that original of content, right? And the last thing she talked about is that on our channels then we would have mastery over the subject matter. If we have read Jane Eyre 17 times, we'll know what Jane Eyre says when she says it. The events in the book from A to B without missing anything in between, even though nothing comes between A and B. You know what I'm saying. You would be able to cite instances, make videos on it, whatever you choose, not having to reread it right before making a video. It would just be a completely different atmosphere on booktube. And something a lot more thoughtful, uh, deeply thoughtful, would kind of feel academic. I think a lot of the booktube creators would also just feel more confident in the videos they were making. Sometimes I approach talking about books and I can't, I, I'm not confident in actually talking about this because I've only read it once, I've only experienced it once, I only have my, you know, first impression thoughts to base off of this entire review video, and sometimes I feel like I'm unprepared. But I don't want to reread a book three times before making a review video on it because that's not, it's just not feasible right now. So I would certainly love to be able to make a video on a book and feel like I know that thing back to front. Anyone asks me questions and I've already thought about it, and that I can bring something unique to someone else's reading experience because I have a mastered reading experience, so to say. So I think you see what I'm getting at. I really want to start rereading. I think that perhaps in 2017, one of my goals will be to reread a book every month. I don't know, but it's something that I enjoy doing and it's something that my current reading is building towards. I'm hoping to find books that I will want to reread in the future in these new books that I'm reading, but I just haven't quite gone to phase two of actually rereading. There's no time like the present to start rereading, but at the moment I just want to kick butt on my TBR bookcase. However, it's something that I need to start working on because I love rereading, or at least I have loved rereading. And I say that I love rereading, but I haven't been doing that in the last couple years. And that's something, an aspect of my reading that I want to get back because I think it's really important and really special for me. And I think it's like extra self care-y because you're sitting down reading something, you know exactly what you're going to get. And yet you're still taking the time to do it because it means that much to you. So I'm going to show you the 30 books that I would reread over and over again, at least at this point in my life. Some of the rules that Paige said was that she was counting trilogies as one book. In my case, I'm counting the first three or just three books in a series. You can choose that as one slot for books. I've also tried to get a good schmackering between novels and short stories, children's fiction as well as adult fiction. I think I've also got like one or, uh, one or two plays in there and I'm not sure if any poetry made it in there, which is sad. I should probably rethink that. But in any case, here's my tentative list of 30 and I hope you find it interesting.
All right, so there you have it. Those are the books that at this point in my life, I would reread over and over and over again. Let's see if it changes. I certainly hope it does because there are quite a few awesome books there, but I have faith that there are so many more awesome books out there and hopefully just there, just there on my bookcase waiting for me to read. So fingers crossed that I find some more books to add to this list of 30 or like to replace some things in the list of 30. I don't know. Thank, thank, thank you for watching. Please let me know in the comments down below what your relationship with rereading is, or if you have a favorite book to reread, or the book that you have reread most. Until next time, please remember to continue to be lovely. You are a glistening octopus.